Okay, so I'm gonna do a problem with solving uh, applied problems with first order kinetics. So this is a challenge, right? You, you uh, have successfully done first order kinetics problems and um, this one's sufficiently challenging. It's, it's certainly possible that there'll be some students who, who do not add this to their pie. Okay, this is like the pinnacle, I'd say. So let me go here and remind you, when you have a first order problem, you're gonna be using, like this is a first, this is a rate law for a first order reaction, right? And here's the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. And here's another equation, right? So all these equations we need for the first order. How do we know it's first order? So let's go back and look at the question. So we know it's first order because it says first order here, right? But we also know that it's first order because of, the, of a key word in the question stem. Two gases, X and Y, are found in the atmosphere in only trace amounts because it decomposed quickly. Right? And where is the first order keyword? Right there. First order. Okay, they decompose quickly. So when exposed to UV life, UV light, the half-life of X is 135, while that of Y is 60. Suppose an atmospheric sci scientist studying these decompositions fills a transparent 10 liter flask with X and Y and exposes the flask to UV light. Initially, just a minute here, sorry. Initially, the partial pressure of X is five times greater than the partial pressure of Y. So let's set up a little table so we can think our way through it. Um, I'm going to write in another layer here. Let's bring this layer up here. Let's write over top of this and then we'll disappear the, the text, okay? So let me go in a different color. X and Y. We know, where are we here? That the half-life in minutes of X is 135. And that of Y is 60. Okay. And we also know that the volume of this whole thing is 10 liters, 10 liters, right? And we also know that the partial pressure of X is five times greater than that of Y, but that's all we know. We don't know how many moles are in there. So let's just say that there's five moles in the one, or five, I don't know, partial pressure, five atmospheres, and then one atmosphere of Y. Okay, and that's all we know. Now let me get rid of these and make a little more, a couple more notes. Let me get rid of uh, that, wait, that, and make some more notes. We know from our formula sheet that T one half is equal to 0 0.693 over K. And so K is equal to 0 0.693 over T one half. We know this from our formula sheet, right? So we can go ahead and solve for K. Let's do that. K is equal to the first one. It's gonna be 0 0.693 over 135. Let's do that one first. 0.693 divided by 135 equals 0 0.0051333. 0 0.0051333. 0 .0 you should be solving these also while you're watching the videos. If the videos are confusing to you, uh, it's really gonna help um, to solve these with me, okay? This is gonna be 0 0.01. Five, five. Oops, there's two ones in there. 0 0.1155. Calculate those also. Pause the video and calculate those and verify. Okay? So now that we have that, we have to let's go back and make some, some points. I'm gonna make a new layer here. Come to the new layer and say, oh, okay, what does this mean? This means that you have to know that the partial pressure of X is proportional to the mole fraction of X, right? And the partial pressure of Y is proportional to the mole fraction of Y. I'm just gonna make a couple assumptions here, um, but I'm showing you all of this. That is 
more pressure means more moles, right? That's what that means. All right. More pressure means more moles. Well, that said, we can now say that, the, that, that there's five times as many moles of X as there are Y. And if they have the same volume, because they're in the same flask, we can now say that the, that the initial pressure of X, which I'm calling A, because I'm used to it, right? Can I go back to the formula sheet for a second? Remember, we're using A all the time. That's just a habit, right? So I'm going to keep using it because it's easier for me to recognize things then, right? So we now know that the initial concentration of X is five times that of Y, right? And so the equation that we're going to be uh, using, let me go to black, go to this layer here. Oops, I put those in the wrong layer, didn't I? Just a minute here. Let me go to this layer here. And I put these in the wrong layer. Folks, I'm going to write over top of this, okay? A, 5, and 1. Right? So if I get rid of this layer, that's still there, okay? So now let me go back to this layer for a minute and say, and pull this equation, the integrated rate law expression. My little girl here is wanting to say something to me. What is it, honey? No. No, I just let her come back. Okay. The integrated rate law tells me something about how they, how they, um, what, how long it takes for initial to get to final, right? So I'm writing that out because um, it's in the, the only other law that I have that, that really matters here. Now I'm going to go back and read the question. Okay, so all I did was interpret so far. That's all I've done. Now let me go back and read the question. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. And the question says, as both gases decompose, will the partial pressure of X ever fall below the partial pressure of Y? All right, let's go back here. Will X ever be less than Y? So if we're starting out with more X and it lasts longer, let me go to a different color. Am I in black here? X lasts longer and we're starting out with more of it then no, we're never gonna have less, okay? So I'm gonna come back here. And I'm gonna say, no, we're never gonna have less. So in this question, we're done, right? If you said yes, calculate the time it takes for the partial pressure of X to fall below the partial pressure of Y, all right? And so this is irrelevant because the answer is, is no. But let's, let's, let's rewrite the question to, uh, to practice what's going on here, to practice this question type. Let's rewrite it and suppose, let me get rid of that. Let's suppose now for the rewrite that this actually doesn't last longer. Let's do that, okay? And if that's true, this is gonna be 0 0.1155. This is gonna be 0 0.005133, right? And so the question is at what point at what time T at what time does the concentration of A right and that's at time T right fall below and it's gonna it's gonna fall when they actually pass when when uh, X passes Y it's gonna be they're gonna be equal to each other right that's at time t. So this is the question. At what time do these two equal each other? Or what time does it pass? Okay. Now that we've said that, I'm going to go to my new layer. Actually, I'm going to make a, another layer yet. Just because. I want to give... Uh, where's my new layer? Okay. So that said, 
I have to, in order to do this, what I'm going to say, I'm going to come over to this equation, let me go back here, and say A of T is going to equal, these two are going to equal each other. All right, now here's a tool that we've used rarely, and it's very, it's very clever. In order to find out that, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to set these two equal to each other, and I'm going to solve uh, this whole integrated rate law for for a t. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go back over here. Okay. Now we know that the natural log of the concentration of a at time t is equal to minus k t plus the natural log of a at time zero. We know that because it's on our sheet. Can I go back and show you the sheet again? Remember that? Okay. So if we know that's true, then, and I want to solve for this, so what I have to do is I've got to say the natural log of that. I've got to get the log functions on the same side is equal to minus kt, right? And this is the same thing as saying the natural log of a at t over the a initial is equal to minus kt. And now I can get, you remember the inverse function of the natural log? a at time t, a at zero is equal e to the minus kt. All right. And so a t is equal to a initial e minus kt. All right, this is this is uh, really all I've done is just a bunch of algebra, right? I had to solve for this. Solving for that, the way to isolate that, you've got to go back and do all the reverse functions. Of course, if you you have to uh, understand the order of operations, or else we're going to be it's not going to make sense. All right, you're going to get the wrong answer. So that said, if if a x at time t is equal to a y at time t, then the initial concentration of x is equal to the initial oops 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 of x e to the minus k of x at t is equal to the initial concentration of y e to the minus k y at time t. Right? You see what I did there? Okay, I invoked this equation. All right. Now let's let's uh, let's solve this. I'm really looking for t now, right? I'm looking for how long does it take? Okay, I gotta, gotta um, isolate t. So, I am going to divide both sides I'm gonna keep my mouth shut for a second. It'd probably more pleasant for you if I just don't say anything, right? This is gonna be e to the minus k y t over e to the plus wait no it's going to be minus minus k x t right and these are the same base so what i can do is say e to the minus k y t times e to the plus k x t Right, and now I need my exponent rules e to the kx minus ky t. All right, you see what I did there is equal to, and I also know what these are. This is five and one is equal to five, right? Because that was five. was one. Remember that? The concentrations? Okay. 
This is coming together uh, kind of nicely. I don't know if you like it or not. But I know what these are, right? So now I'm going to say, you know, T is the only thing I don't know. So I'm going to get these back down here by taking the natural log. Let me, am I in black? Let me go back to black. The natural log of 5 is equal to... Okay, and so T is equal to the natural log of 5 over KX minus KY. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to a new layer. It's just too much here. I'm going to go to a new color too because it's time for a change. So I'm going to rewrite this equation up here and then I'm going to get rid of that layer. This is a little bit, a little bit cumbersome. see if I can just do it see if I can do it from memory t is equal to the natural log of 5 kx minus ky let me come back over here is that is that what I had that's right lin 5 kx minus ky okay so what I got here all right so if that's true kx was what was kx where was that was here maybe no so this layer, no, this layer, yeah. Remember, uh, KX was 0 0.01155, okay. And KY was 0 0.005133. I think I can remember those. Let's go back over here. It is 0 0.01155 minus 0. 0 0.005133. Okay. Um, 0 0.01155 minus 0 0.005133 equals natural log of 5 over 0 0.0064167. Which is equal to doing a video. No, no problem. Come on in. Uh, I'm doing videos in my uh, in my uh, dining room, and I don't always warn everybody. Okay, so this is one point six oh nine four. Four, I guess okay divided by 0 0.0064167 that's gonna be a big number isn't it divided by 0 0.0064167 equals oh that's not so bad 250 250.8 250 minutes all right that's how long it took for x to get lower than y. That was if in the alternate uh, universe that you and I described, we switched the half-lives, right? So going back to the initial question, it turns out that it turns out that there was more x and it lasted longer. So I'm back here. So really, it was no. However. If we switch these and put this to 60 minutes and this to 135, then X, even though it starts out with more, would it end, would would be decomposing faster, right? And so we eventually get get smaller than Y. All right, so that's a long, elaborate problem. Uh, hopefully, that was like my fourth take on that video. So hopefully, that was clear enough. Uh, the first couple rounds were I just I just felt not not uh, clear enough. So hopefully, that's helpful. Um, I encourage you to, to, I really encourage you actually to go back and try and redo it the way I did it. Uh, because the tools that we used were largely like exponent tools and solving for logarithms, right? And setting two things equal to each other when we know that what that means. If they are, they're equal to each other when, when at a particular time one passes the other, right? So consider going back and redoing the, that problem. Uh, though, although I will admit it's, it's certainly, um, it's certainly at the, at the pinnacle, I think, of what we're going to do this semester. All right, good luck.